In this video, I'm going to introduce you to MAP kinase signaling pathways, and then we'll look at one specific MAP kinase pathway, the ras raf mec erk pathway. Well, MAP kinase, mitogen activated protein kinase signaling cascades, are key players that regulate some really important cellular processes. These pathways are linked to cell proliferation and differentiation, they're linked to program cell death, and they're linked to the cell's stress responses. The pathways are critical for normal development, and mutations in these pathways are implicated in many different cancers, so they are important for us to know about. Well, one of the things that you may have noticed is that I said MAP kinase signaling pathways, plural, and that's because when people talk about MAP kinase, there's not a single pathway. There are families of pathways. What they have in common, though, is that when a signal is applied to the outside of the cell and binds to its receptor, we get an activation of a series of intracellular events where one protein activates another, which activates another, and another. And in each of the variations on these signaling pathways, we'll find a member of the MAP kinase family. But the specific proteins that are activated in the pathway that I outlined will be different than in a different MAP kinase signaling pathways and different still from another MAP kinase signaling pathways. Well, let's go ahead and look at what they do have in common. What all the MAP kinase pathways have in common is that they activate members of this MAP kinase family. Down here I've drawn four similar looking proteins. They all belong to a MAP kinase family, and there are 13 members of this family. There are quite a few. These kinases all have the property that they'll be activated when they become phosphorylated. And the enzyme that phosphorylates them will also be part of this pathway. These are called the MAP kinase kinase, or MAP 2K proteins, because they can catalyze the phosphorylation of MAP kinase. There are seven members of this family, so there are a lot of those as well. They also get activated when they're phosphorylated, and so another layer in these pathways will involve the MAP kinase kinase kinase, or MAP 3K, family of proteins. There are 15 members of that family, and these MAP kinase 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 can be activated by other upstream membrane events, and although I haven't drawn it in this cartoon, there are lots of different receptors that could initiate these different pathways. I know that this figure is pretty overwhelming, but the good news is that we can divide MAP kinases into four general pathways. These are ERK12 pathway. It's involved in cell proliferation, growth, and differentiation. There's the JNK pathway and the P38 pathway. Both of those are involved in stress and apoptosis. And then the fourth type of pathway is the ERK5 pathway. We know less about this, but it's involved in cell survival, anti-apoptosis, and differentiation. Now, these different pathways get their names. They're named after the particular MAP kinase protein family member that's found in the pathway. And you can see that there are different MAP kinases in the four different pathways. So for example, in the ERK12 pathway, the MAP kinase family member is ERK1 or ERK2. They're two closely related proteins. Whereas in the JNK pathway, it will be JNK. P38 has P38 as the MAP kinase family member, and so on. Well, it's not just the MAP kinase family member that's different in these different pathways. There are also different MAP kinase kinase family members that are involved. There are different MAP kinase 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 members that are involved in the pathways. And there can be different membrane-associated events and different receptors that can be activating these pathways. I don't think it makes sense to look at every single MAP kinase pathway, but I do want to talk about one. And the one that we're going to look at is going to be the first one that was identified and the one that we know the most about, and that's going to be the ras raf mec erk pathway. Well, the ras raf mec erk signaling pathway is typically initiated when signals bind to receptor tyrosine kinases. Receptor tyrosine kinases are membrane proteins. They are typically built out of monomers. Proteins found in this family have a single membrane spanning domain. They've got an extracellular domain that can bind the ligand, and then a cytoplasmic domain that contains receptor tyrosine kinase. And in the inactive state, when there's no signal around, often the monomers are dissociated from one another. So what will happen when we add the signal is that those will go and bind to the monomers. And then that leads to receptor dimerization. Now the two monomers have a high affinity for one another, and we get this dimerized receptor. And you'll remember that I said the cytoplasmic domain has tyrosine kinase activity, and when they're brought close like this, what happens is a process called transautophosphorylation. 
which is basically a fancy way of saying that the individual monomers reach across and phosphorylate tyrosine residues on their partner. So we end up with a fully activated receptor that looks like this. Now, what happens next? The binding of the phosphate groups to the tyrosines changes the conformation of the cytoplasmic domain, and those phosphotyrosines can recruit other proteins to the membrane. So in this pathway, there's a protein called GERB2, which has a binding site for one of those phosphorylated tyrosines, and once it's phosphorylated, it will come up to the membrane. GERB2 has another binding site for a protein called Son of Sevenless, SOS, and it will recruit SOS then to the membrane as well. Son of Sevenless is a guanine exchange factor. It's going to promote the exchange of GTP for GDP, and its target is a small G protein called RAS. RAS is a small monomeric G protein. These proteins belong to a different family than the heterotrimeric G proteins that we've seen associated with the GPCRs. The biggest difference perhaps is that there's a single subunit. But like those other G proteins, they have the property that they can bind either GDP or GDP, and when they're bound to GDP, they tend to be inactive. They can be activated if they exchange that, and that's where Son of Sevenless comes in. So once Son of Sevenless is brought up to the membrane, there's a high likelihood it will see RAS, which is tethered up the membrane, and once the two proteins interact, that will prompt the exchange of GTP for GDP, and that activates RAS. And RAS is free then to diffuse away through the membrane. The next step in the process is RAF. That's the MAP kinase, kinase, kinase. The activated RAS recruits RAF to the membrane, where RAF will get activated through a relatively complicated process that involves both phosphorylation, the addition of phosphate groups, and the removal of some phosphate groups, and now RAF is activated. Remember that RAF is MAP kinase, 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 MAP3K, and its target then will be MAP2K, which in this system is MEC. The activated RAF can phosphorylate MEC, MEC is also a protein kinase, and once it's activated, it can phosphorylate and activate its target, ERK. And now we have the activated MAP protein kinase. Now you might have noticed that I drew RAF and MEC and ERK close to one another, and there's a reason for that. In this system, there are scaffolding proteins that can hold the inactive versions of RAF and MEC and ERK close to one another. So once one gets phosphorylated, it's likely to be able to rapidly phosphorylate the next and then the next. It's thought that by bringing them close together and by holding them in the right configuration, you can speed up the process. Mutations that knock out scaffolding proteins can be lethal, presumably because there simply isn't a way to activate this pathway at a high enough rate. And interestingly, too high concentrations of scaffolding proteins can also slow down signaling presumably because different scaffolding proteins are sequestering the different players away from one another so that they can't interact. Well, let's look at some downstream events. There are a lot of targets for the activated ERK. ERK can phosphorylate a variety of proteins. There are cytoplasmic targets that can be phosphorylated by ERK. For example, there are other enzymes, other kinases, there are cytoskeletal elements, there are regulators of apoptosis, and all of those are potential targets that can be phosphorylated when ERK gets activated. There are also membrane targets like receptors and transporters that can be phosphorylated by ERK. Activated ERK can also translocate into the nucleus where there are nuclear targets, and so there are transcription factors which can be phosphorylated by ERK leading to gene expression, and notably, this pathway is involved in cell growth and proliferation, and some of the genes that get activated through this pathway are cell cycle regulators that will allow a cell to enter mitosis and replicate. Finally, there are targets for ERK where it can feed back on upstream regulators. So for example, ERK can phosphorylate son of sevenless, and it can phosphorylate MEC, so there's a way for there to be feedback from the activated ERK. Well, I just said that activation of this pathway could lead to cell growth and proliferation, and indeed, the ras raf mec erk pathway is linked to cell growth and division, it's linked to differentiation, it's also linked to anti-apoptosis, so the inhibition of programmed cell death. So if the normal function of RAS and MEC is to promote cell growth and prevent death, you won't be surprised to learn that mutations in the players in this pathway are linked to cancer. In fact, RAS is linked to more than 30 different types of cancers, 
and a recent meta-analysis showed that 17% of all cancer patients carry a mutation in RAS. The mutant form found in cancer cells is typically constitutively active, and what I mean by that is that even if there's no signal, so that the signaling pathway is turned off, RAS is bound to GTP and is turning on the pathway. When a patient carries a mutation like this where RAS is constitutively active, often some of the most effective drugs will be those that will inhibit the downstream players. So for example, there are a number of different drugs that target RAF and inhibit it. There are also drugs that inhibit MEK. And what this means is that even if a patient has this mutation so that the pathway is being initiated in the absence of a signal, it's possible to counteract the mutation in RAS by turning off the players later in the pathway. Well, this strikes me as a good place to wrap up our discussion of MAP kinase signaling pathways and of this particular RAS-RAF-MEK-ERK pathway.